Hello Sim Racers and welcome back to the Fixed Setup Oval Racing Guide. We'll be covering week 6 of Season 1, which runs from January 18th through the 25th. How did Sea Fixed at Myrtle Beach treat you if you dove into that? From the few races that I did, it was some of the worst racing I have ever seen in my life. But it was pretty entertaining if you just focused on the crashes. One race I started 20th, finished 6th, and I don't think I passed a single person under green flag. It was just from crashes around me that I gained spots. Wild, wild stuff. Let me know down in the comments section below how your week went. This week we get a nice mix of short track racing and various forms of speedways. I was pretty excited to see the tracks on the schedule for this week. There really should be some great opportunities for success. Just as a friendly reminder, these episodes will always be timestamped for your convenience. So. If you're looking for one series in particular, use the timestamps listed in the description below. With that said, let's check out this week's races. Before we begin, please take a moment to listen to my disclaimers. As with any skill-based activity, your mileage may vary with the information shared in this video. Sim racing requires individual effort to improve, and simply watching a video will not make you a better sim racer. Tips and tricks are not one size fits all, and you may need to adjust based on your skill level. These episodes are recorded before the week begins, so the guided qualifying lap should not be viewed as the gold standard for the best lap time possible. Treat this information simply as a starting point for your own practice routine. Any analysis or commentary that I provide comes from my own experience on iRacing and may not always directly translate to what happens to you. I'm human, I make mistakes, and I can be wrong. I try my best to avoid errors and misinformation, but if I do make a mistake, you have my apology in advance. The Arca Menard Series heads to Iowa Speedway, a 9 tenths of a mile, progressively banked track. The race is 40 laps and takes place at noon in Sim. Iowa is a track that promotes good racing because of its wide surface, but it does lure drivers into overdriving and shredding their tires. It's possible to make up ground from green flag to checkered, but starting up front makes it a lot easier to find success. For my qualifying run, I used a 16 to 1 steering ratio and 62% brake bias. To ensure the best start to your flying lap, use the top lanes of 3 and 4. There's more banking up there and you're less likely to get loose using those lanes. Look for the bend in the top seam as your entry point for turn one. Ride light brake pressure all the way to the yellow line and apply enough throttle to arc out towards the tire marks on the outside wall. It's easy to get loose, so be mindful of your throttle application. Hold the wall down the back straightaway and turn in for three before the last caution light. Use light brake pressure to get to the yellow line and get back to the throttle as soon as you can. The car will fight you as it wants to move up the track, but keep a tidy exit and cut the front stretch to gain a little extra time. My lap time was a 24.063. I found that the same wheel settings from qualifying felt the best in my mock race runs. After 10 laps, my right front tire was worn 1% more than my right rear, but the car felt pretty stable throughout the run and didn't necessarily get tight or loose. Unless I ran the bottom, I did notice it got loose if I ran the bottom a lot, so if you find that's happening to you, I recommend moving up a lane into that second groove from the bottom and you're probably going to be in good shape. The Arca series doesn't have caution flags, so if you struggle to make passes or you get spun out, it's going to be a tough race for you. Take care of your tires with good throttle and brake discipline, and you should be able to power to the end with a little bit of luck to get a good finish. C-Fix goes to the 2009 version of Texas Motor Speedway, and like I said last week when A-Fix was there, this is the better version of that track. I know, I know. You're sick of hearing it, but the current version's terrible. I'm sorry. Anyways, this race is 40 laps and takes place at 3.25 p.m. in sim. Qualifying is pretty easy. It's full throttle, both laps, and just hold the smoothest steering wheel possible. To do this, I ran a 16 to 1 steering ratio 
and 63% brake bias, but since you don't touch the brakes, really doesn't matter. Use lap one to build up maximum speed and get out of turn four as close to the wall as you can. Cut the second dogleg as much as possible and keep the left side tires on the top seam for a more shallow entry into turn one. Keep the truck on the bottom as long as you can and exit out towards the wall, letting the left side tires barely graze the start of the dashed lines on the back straightaway. Turn in for turn three just after the dashed lines end and ease the truck to the bottom. Keep a tidy exit and cut the dogleg as close as possible without touching the grass to finish the lap. My lap time was a 29.733. I kept the same wheel settings as qualifying for my mock race run, no need to change it. By myself, the truck was pretty easy to drive lap after lap, but it did lose rear grip after a handful of laps, and I found it harder to keep the truck pinned to the bottom because of that. In traffic, I imagine that dirty air and draft will create a vastly different experience and may cause more right front tire wear, thus a tighter feel overall. After 10 laps by myself, the right rear tire was worn 2% more than the right front, but again, in traffic, it's probably not going to be that way. Like most C-fixed races at speedways, protecting the bottom will be the most important thing you can do, and I'd imagine there's going to be some pretty aggressive blocking on display. It's also been noted that historically at Texas, restarts can be very treacherous, so be prepared to dive into the grass to miss a stack up as people attempt to get a jump on the restarts. B Fixed heads to Rockingham Speedway, a beloved track from NASCAR's history. This is a track that will destroy your tires if you're not smooth each and every lap, so prepare to tiptoe as fast as possible. The race is 60 laps and takes place at noon in sim. I tested at 14 to 1 and 16 to 1 steering ratios for qualifying, and I felt more consistent with 16 to 1, so that's my recommendation, along with 62% brake bias. Keep about a half car width from the wall down the front stretch and spot your entry into one just past the red logo on the wall. It's very easy to overdrive turn one and ruin your lap. Don't go to the yellow line immediately, but rather hit the apex late and get as much throttle down as you possibly can to exit turn two. Spot your entry into three just past the wall text. You want to be on the yellow line entering turn three. It is absolutely crucial to the lap. You can pick up the throttle sooner and more aggressively at this end of the track and make sure you cut the front stretch to gain a little bit of time to complete the lap. My lap time was a 23.515, but my optimal time was somewhere in the fours. For my mock race run, I used the same wheel settings that I had in qualifying, 16 to 1 steering ratio and 62% brake bias. After 10 laps, my right front tire was worn 1% more than my right rear, and I could definitely feel a slight loss of grip, but that car was pretty fun to drive throughout the course of the run. I was pretty down on B-Fix last week at Chicagoland, but I'm happy to tell you I'm really pleased with how drivable the car felt around Rockingham Speedway. Just like when A-Fix was here in week four, overdriving the corners will lead to an increased wear on the right front tire and a lower chance of success. So. If you want to find some good results this week, back up those corner entries, be easy on that throttle pedal, and don't come up off the bottom. Those are your keys to success for The Rock. AFIX goes to Worldwide Technology Raceway, also known as Gateway Raceway. Gateway is a flat speedway with long sweeping corners, and as luck would have it, the cup cars are coming equipped with the low downforce, high horsepower package this week. So if you're not comfortable with that package or you're not really smooth with that throttle pedal, a fix could be a big struggle for you. The race is 60 laps and takes place at 8.20 p.m. in sim under the lights. For my qualifying run, I used a 14 to one steering ratio, plus 10 steering offset and 62% brake bias. I normally don't talk about steering offset, but the plus 10 gets the steering wheel just about level on the straightaways, 
You may need to fine tune it to your liking, but it was too far off to the left for me. Try to straight line the exit of four coming to start your flying lap, but be careful with that throttle pedal because it's very easy to suddenly lose rear traction in this low downforce package. Spot the entry to turn one as just past the end of pit road or just before the last caution light on the fence. Use the dark strip of pavement to guide you through the turn and roll into the throttle as much as you can to exit turn two. Be mindful of the gap in the wall down the backstretch. I have seen people move over too much to the right and clip where that wall begins again. Use the last caution light as a reference point for turn three. In all my runs, I found that rolling the bottom next to the curbs at this end of the track resulted in a better run out of four. Again, throttle discipline will make or break your lap at Gateway. My lap time was a 32.905 and my optimal time was in the eights. For my mock race run, I used the same wheel settings from qualifying, but I recommend you try out the lowest ratio you can safely control over the course of 10 to 15 laps. Since this car will get loose because of the low downforce package, having a little lower steering ratio might actually help you catch the car when it slides. After 10 laps, my right rear tire was worn 1% more than my right front, but the temperatures were pretty identical, so really, tire wear will come down to how much you overdrive the corner entries and how aggressive you are with the throttle. The best advice I can give is to drive within your comfort zone and don't worry about other drivers who are faster than you. The temptation will be to get to the throttle sooner or harder to keep pace or defend, but you'll only hurt the tires and possibly spin out doing this. Let others drive themselves out of the race and put yourself in a position to take advantage of their mistakes. And just like that, you're now briefed and ready to start practicing for this week's races. I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode and found the information to be educational, but most importantly, helpful. If it was, please leave a thumbs up, and if it wasn't, a thumbs down, so I know to do better next time. If you want to see more iRacing content similar to this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on so that you never miss an episode. Additionally, you can catch me live streaming iRacing on my Twitch channel, linked down in the description below. If you want to get in touch with me and stay up to date on the latest channel activity, the best way to do that is to follow me on Twitter, also linked down in the description below. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and have a great week of racing.